Welcome to Primetime Conversations. Here's your host, James Tunstall. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. Today we've got a very special guest, star of one of my favourite martial art movies of all time. Uh, everyone knows him as Scorpion. Today we know him as Chris Casamasa. Chris, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you for having me. Cool. How's everything in uh, sunny California? All good? Well, normally I'd say it's sunny and warm, but uh, today we've got some rain. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was just over here in the UK where we get the bad weather. Right. Cool. Just mentioned briefly off camera, uh, the Oscars last night, you caught the most important part, you said. Yeah, it was something, right? Yeah. But do you reckon it was staged or do you reckon it was real? You know, it looked pretty real to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take your word for it then because you're the expert. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's hard to it's hard to fake a hit like that. Yeah. Cool. So uh so I suppose we'll go into the beginning, Chris. So your father founded your school, is that right? Yes, that is correct. In uh, 1965 he started started yeah. our uh, our journey in Red Dragon. Why age did you start? I would imagine you started at a real young age. Say again. I would imagine you started at a very young age then, seeing that your father Yeah, I did. I, yeah, I started when I was four years old. Right. I, uh, my, uh, I've got three boys and they're into martial arts, power rangers, Mortal Kombat and stuff. And uh, I remember taking, well, my eldest is eight now, so we're thinking about uh, taking them back. But he tried it when I was a four-year-old. It wasn't too bad. Uh, but, uh, but now I think he wants to go back. But especially my middle boy, Sammy, he's really, he's the athletic one, we say. Mm -hmm. well that's great i'm glad to hear your kids are training yeah uh, they're into it and obviously martial art films and obviously mortal Kombat, power rangers they're really into it <laughs> yes i actually said to him tonight that you actually uh, trained jason david trunk that is correct yeah. yeah how did that come about well he lived in the area where our stu studios were and uh you know his mom brought him into us and, and wanted him to start training with martial arts and you know, he stuck it out and stayed with it. He's very talented, very good uh, kid and, uh, you know, became a black belt. He was actually working for me at the time. He was actually, it was, I was grooming him to be a, a Red Dragon studio owner. And, uh, you know, I got a call from my agent saying, hey, they're casting this new TV show, but they're looking for kids, younger kids that are uh, super talented in martial arts. Do you have anyone? And I go, yeah, man, I've got, I've got a, we had a stable of them at the time. And I sent Jason out. He's one of the guys we sent out. And uh, he ended up getting the part as the, you know, he's the original green, red ranger, one of those. Uh, green, green, green yep. yeah. And then he became red and then white and the whole thing. Like he was probably one of the most popular rangers in the show. But, uh, you know, he did the audition and got the part and he called me the next day and he's like, hey, Sensei, I got the I got the part. It's really great. And I go, that's cool. What time are you coming into work today? He goes, I don't think I'm going to be working anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. And correct me if I'm wrong, you're working with him now on the Legend of the White Dragon. Is that right? Yeah. So we were, I was supposed to be in that Legend of the White Dragon, but it ended up my schedule and the shooting schedule didn't work. I was working on a couple different projects and, and traveling all over the country. So every time they called to put me in it, I couldn't make the production times. So Jason and I have talked and they're going to do a sequel to it. And when they do, oh, then he cool. goes, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a much bigger, better part for you anyway. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to have some, some good, uh, FaceTime together and some good, uh, showdowns on screen when he does the next one. It looks great. I, I actually caught, uh, they released like a trailer the other week and, uh, it's looking good. And obviously he's teamed up with Aaron from Bat in the Sun and he's doing yeah. great things on these channels. So really looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. I can't wait to see it. So let's go uh, a little bit further back, your competitive background. And I was looking for your accolades and I'm like, wow, this guy was like a, a beast, a killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a competitive streak in me. I got, I got bit by the competition bug uh, at a young age as well and, and spent, uh, gosh, almost a decade on the pro tour. And, you know, the last four years that I was on the tour, I was the number one competitor in the U.S. for, for four years straight. And I figured, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on top and, uh, and retire uh, while I'm still number one. Was there any other notable names you came up against on the while you was competing? Oh yeah, listen, some of the greats, and you know, a couple of the guys like Hakeem Alston, who was also in Mortal Kombat with me. 
uh, was on the tour. A lot of the guys that end up in the TV show WMAC Masters were also, we were all kind of on the tour at the same time, and they were all champions in their own right. You know, they got the Pac brothers, you got Carmichael Simon, Willie Johnson, you know, Richard Brandon. So, so many. It was a, it was a, we had a really healthy competition crop of people. Uh, and it was, uh, it made the competitions interesting because we had so many different and diverse personalities out there that uh, there was never a dull moment. And the cool news was you never know who was going to win. No. And uh, I suppose this was in line with the popularity of martial arts films, obviously, Fandam and Seagull comes to mind. So I, I would imagine this thing was quite competitive with like the awareness, like karate kid and all these things, like people flooding to these schools. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I would imagine the, the new show, Cobra Kai, I would imagine that's helped business for you as well, like people getting back into karate. You know, it's funny, someone asked me that in another interview, and we went back and did some data and some research across, uh, you know, our studios here in Southern California, and it is actually true, like the Cobra Kai series has sparked a renewed interest in, in people wanting to go to martial arts, young and old, like even we're getting more and more adults in now that want to be uh, Cobra Kai martial artists, so it is, uh, I'm happy that the series is doing well, because it's good for business. Any chance we could see you on there one day? There is a good chance you could see me on that, and and uh, fingers crossed, I'm also working on trying to get on The Mandalorian, which would also be a oh, great well. show I'd love to work on. Yeah. I was speaking to uh, John Turk, Sub-Zero for everyone, and uh, we just mentioned like these different roles, and he's so happy to see the popularity of martial arts coming into the fold, because even though the schools have been so healthy, I suppose you look at it with like, the movies, there hasn't been much emphasis on martial arts movies. I know... Um, Scott Adkins has been flying the flag for a while, but with the recent resurgence of Cobra Kai and stuff, it's great to see it getting more awareness. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, Scott Adkins is doing it. There's another uh, guy out of Canada, I believe his name's uh, Alan Elaine Moosey or Moosey. Yeah, I don't know how to say right. But they're they're doing they're doing some some really great stuff, and there hasn't been, and there really isn't. I mean, with the exception of the Cobra Kai series, there's not like a true big budget martial arts film. And on one thing, one side, that's actually okay because if you think about it, every other movie that's coming out is featuring martial arts. Think about the whole entire Marvel franchise. Like, yeah. look at all the martial arts fighting that was in that. That was a big boom for business. It got people interested. Everyone wants to be a superhero, which is great. Batman like does a martial arts fighting style in his style of martial arts. So, although there hasn't been any like standout martial arts superstars. Martial arts has been starring in all, all of the major blockbuster films that have been coming out. Yeah. Speaking of Batman, you was in Batman Forever as Batman's stunt double, uh, uh, Batman and Robin, sorry. Uh, that must have been a great time. That was an amazing time. And uh, it was cool. You know, listen, I'm probably one of maybe 20 people on the planet that have ever worn the bat suit. So to have that opportunity to be able to do that was amazing. Uh, the cast and the, and the crew on that set were great. It was the biggest budget film I'd ever worked on in that, at that time. You know, the, the budget for, I think it was a $110 million film, which by today's standards isn't that much, but back then it was huge. And, uh, you know, I got to meet all the biggest stars. George Clooney, who I doubled for, awesome dude, uh, took me out to lunch the first day that we were on the set, so it was cool. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Uma Thurman, Chris O'Donnell, Alicia Silverstone. Like, I got to meet all those people and kind of hang with them for a couple months, so it was a really, really neat experience. You must have a fun Arnie Schwarzenegger story. <laughs> uh, I do actually have a fun Arnold Schwarzenegger. The first time I met him, I hadn't been formally introduced to him, but I was all in the bat suit getup, and it was the when we're inside the ice arena that he comes in to take over, and we're getting ready to do some fighting stuff. So George Clooney wasn't there, but I had the whole outfit on with the head cowl and everything, so I looked just like George Clooney. So Arnold came in because he had dialogue. And we were standing on the set and I was talking to him for five minutes and I realized he thinks I'm George Clooney. <laughs> he has no idea who I am. So finally the, the director came over and we all started talking and, and uh, the director goes, hey, by the way, Arnold, have you met Chris? And he goes, Chris, I, I was talking to George. And I go, well, I didn't want to say anything. I was just excited to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. So I suppose we'll go to the uh, main topic. So Scorpion Mortal Kombat. So how did it come about you being cast as Scorpion? Uh, right place, right time, right opportunity is actually the, the short story to the longer version of that. But uh, when I went to do Mortal Kombat, and this was before Batman and Robin or, or, or any of that other stuff, 
um, I went to audition as one of the background fighters. They, right. uh, you know, my agent got a call and said, hey, they need a bunch of martial artists to do the background fight scenes for some of the parts like where Johnny Cage is fighting Goro and, you know, the arena or the banquet scene. They want, you know, they want martial arts people in the background. And I thought, okay, cool. Like, I'd like to be in a major motion picture. I'd done a lot of boom, B movies at that time. But so I went in and went into the audition. And for me, fortunately, again, I had just come off the pro tour. So the way they had the audition set up was like a tournament. So I thought, wow, this is great. I'm going to ace this for sure. Because they had like a little ring set up and they had three guys in chairs. It was like, a, just like a tournament. So I wanted to do something that would set myself apart. And I knew that I could jump over those guys that were sitting in the chairs. So I started doing my routine and I ran right towards them and did a jumping kick and went right over them and then land on the other side. I still remember to this day, their heads going like watching me go over <laughs> and I jump back over them, finish my moves. And I get a, I get a phone call that night that says, Hey, we want you to come back again. I'm like, all right, cool. So I came back the second day, did some weapons. And then I got a call that night and they said, we want you to come back again. I'm like, wow, it is hard to be a background or an extra in a major motion picture. I had three auditions for a background. Like I never even heard of that. And, you know, and the first day when we got there, they said, listen, all the roles are filled. We just need our background fighters, blah, blah, blah. Third day I go back, there's only three guys. It's me and two other guys. And the, uh, the guy who walked, a guy walked over to us and I didn't know who he was. Later I realized, or I learned that he was the director of the movie. But we're standing there and they have a movie camera and they're just filming us. They're just panning the camera back and forth and not having us do any action. We're just standing there. And then the director walks over and goes, hey, would you guys mind taking off your shirts? And unfortunately, I'm a bit of a smart ass and I was nervous because it was a big thing I was never part of. So I just looked at him and I said, hey, uh, if it'll help me get in this movie, I'll go back to your trailer. <laughs> <laughs> so see, you laugh, right? You laugh. That's the response I wanted to get. Yeah. He just looked at me like, like stone face, like, oh no. And I thought, I thought, yeah, I go for whatever this is, I'm not getting it. Like, I thought I was done at that point. So, you know, we did, they, they did the, they did the filming of us. And then they go like into this football huddle behind the camera for what seemed like an hour, but it was probably a minute. And then the same guy walks over and he shakes my hand and he said, welcome to Mortal Kombat. You're going to be Scorpion. Wow. And until that moment, like I had no idea because they told us all the roles were cast and and that whole thing. So it was, it was a very surreal moment. Uh, and the best part was I got home that night and I, I called my mom and I'm like, mom, 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 guess what? I'm going to be Scorpion. And my mom goes, that's great, honey. What's a Scorpion? <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you uh, play the video games before? And... Oh yeah. I was a big fan of the game. My, my right. uh, two, my two favorite characters were Raiden and Scorpion in that right. order. I actually liked Raiden better than Scorpion. Nowadays, of course, it's the other way around. But back then, those were my two favorite characters. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. So your fight, I mean, the two best fights in the movie is you against Johnny Cage and uh, Liu Kang Reptile. Uh, obviously, Keith Cook, great martial artist. I would love mm -hmm. to speak to him one day. Was it true that your fight was meant to end in the forest and test audiences said there wasn't enough fighting and they, they actually brought you back to film the... Uh, conclusion of the fight in the never realm, I suppose you could say. Yeah, well, that and that again, that's a testament to the fans. And listen, I, that's one of the reasons why I'm so appreciative of all the fans that we have for Mortal Kombat. They are loyal, they're dedicated, and they're the ones that really made that fight happen. Now, the fight was actually choreographed and it was done, and it was supposed to be filmed in that rubber tree plantation in Thailand where we shot it. But as movie productions do, they run over schedule and over budget. And ours was no different. We were behind schedule. Matter of fact, I was in Thailand for three weeks and I only worked the very last day before we had to go. Oh. So we ran, I mean, they, production had to pack up and go back to LA. So we're shooting, you know, we do the opening sequence with all the block shots for the, for the computer graphics for the Scorpion's creature. And then Lyndon and I, who Lyndon played Johnny Cage, we're ready to do the fight. And then they're like, well, we're, we're done. Mm -hmm. And we both looked at each other. And we're like, what? what do you mean you're done? We've spent three weeks rehearsing this fight scene. It's awesome. It's amazing. And Lyndon did a great job because he wanted to be as authentic to Johnny Cage as possible. So he was training in the martial arts. We were working out every day. We had a great fight scene planned. I'm like, no, we're out of time. We're just going to do, we're going to have, uh, Lyndon's going to run at you and do the jump kick that you see him do in the, in the beginning of the fight. In the original cut, he hits me with that and I'm dead. That's right, yeah. 
right? So that was the original cut of the movie. They did the test screenings and the test audiences, all of them, not just one of them, but all of them. They did it three times. When it got to that part, they literally, the, the producer, Larry Kasanoff, called me up and he goes, you're not going to believe what happened. And I go, what? He goes, when it got to the part where Lyndon kicks you and, and kills you, they threw their popcorn at the screen. I said, there's no way that Johnny Cage would beat Scorpion this easy. And, and this is BS. He goes, two of our screeners walked out. Yeah. And I went, wow, that's so cool. And he goes, so we're going to do a reshoot and we're going to do it. And we're shooting Santa Monica. And then they built Scorpion's lair and, and that all that got filmed in LA. So it was because of the fans that that fight scene actually happened. Did you get extra payday out of it? Oh yeah. 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 We were oh, in yeah. that hangar for, for another three weeks filming that because oh, well. it was a pretty intense fight scene. And yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's, it's three or four minutes on film, the whole fight, but it takes, you know, you're shooting 10, 12 hour days, five days a week for three weeks straight to get, to get all the angles and the coverage and, and everything's got to be right. So it was, uh, it was a lot of work, but also a lot of fun. What did you think to the uh, new movie that was released last year? Listen, I'm glad they, I'm glad they did a new movie. I think uh, with this next one, because I, I know they're going to do a sequel, they can do some some more interesting things like uh, there's there's talk of a, a multiverse for Mortal Kombat. So bringing back different versions of, of some of the characters, which I think would be great. You know, fans didn't seem to be very receptive to the new character. Um, but listen, that actor, I, I think he did a really a great job. And and, you know, some of the, the beginning, you know, listen, I, the beginning of the movie, first five minutes, I thought were awesome. Oh, the yeah. last fight, the last fight scene, last five, seven minutes, I thought was really cool, too. You know, in the middle, there was some lag and, and some story gaps. but Listen, overall, I think it was good. I'd be, I'd love to be part of the the next generation of that that goes forward there. And uh, you know, we've had some conversations with them, so we'll see where that goes. Yeah, I'm a Mortal Kombat nerd. I enjoyed the the fighting and the fatalities were great and the gore, but actual Lorai's story, it wasn't for me. But the thing I'm thinking of, similar to what you're thinking, well, at least the Mortal Kombat name is getting out there more, more exposure. And if there is going to be a multiverse may find scorpion free scorpion in part two we, we never know so hopefully fingers well, crossed they better happen. they better oh, yeah. right <laughs> cool well chris it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you i know we had some uh, d- delays uh, getting this uh, connection sorted but thankfully we made it but uh before we do go tell everyone where they can find you on social media and if you want to promote anything please promote promote away yeah thank you so much uh listen i'm super easy to find on social media i'm on all the channels just type in my name uh, good luck spelling it, and maybe it's up on the screen, but uh, you can find me on, on TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, I'm on all of them. Just hit me up anytime and like and follow my page, and I'll keep you posted on, on movie projects we've got going on and and uh, things that are in the works. Cool. Well, thanks again, Chris, and yeah, we'll try and do this again uh, soon. Awesome, man. Thank you so much.